Our next guest made his uh, debut for the Padres in 1982 after coming up in the minor leagues and played a critical role for the 1984 pennant-winning team, pitching both in the starting rotation, out of the bullpen. He is one of the coaches here at Fantasy Camp, and if you don't know your story, his story, and you're not a, a longtime Padres baseball fan, it's certainly one of the more remarkable Sad, but ultimately, I think, inspirational stories in baseball. Dave Dravecki is with us. Dave, it's good to finally have you on here on 97.3 The Fan. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's our pleasure. The, the first <laughs> interaction I had with Dave was uh, we were at down around the bullpen, and they had asked some pitchers to you know go and see what you had. So I was throwing a little bit, and I sat down after I was done and just started listening in on some stories. And it was Dave, and you were talking to Mud Grant, and you were talking about the trade. Yeah. Uh, when you got traded to the Giants from the Padres. Tell everybody what that was like that day when they called you in and, and tell everybody who was with you and what yeah. happened. Yeah, well, so we were in Montreal, and we had just finished a game in Montreal. We were all coming into the clubhouse and, you know, getting ready to shower up and head back to the hotel. And all of a sudden, one of the clubbies comes up to us and says... Uh, and it was you? It was me, Kevin Mitchell, and Craig Lefferts. He said, hey, Larry Boa wants to see you immediately in his office. And we're like, oh, man, what the heck's going on? So we go into the office, and, and, and we just stand there. And he goes, look, I'm not, I'm not going to beat around the bush. We've traded you guys to the San Francisco Giants. And it was total silence in the room. So we walk out. Everybody goes to their locker, gets ready. We gather up all our gear. And we're now, the three of us are now heading back to the hotel. And Kevin looks at me and Lefty and says, I ain't going. I said, Boogie. We called him Boogie Bear. Yeah. He said, Boogie, you got to go. Yeah. I mean, to. we've made this trade. You, you can't say no. You have to go. Well, then I'm done. Oh. I mean, he was so upset because San Diego's his home. Yeah. And he was with the Mets. And all of a sudden now he is, you know, he's with the Padres and he's home. And, and that was such a big deal for him to be home and it took lefty and i not only that night but the next morning making sure he was up and with us to get in the cab and i gotta tell you something guys it ain't very easy trying to convince kevin mitchell <laughs> to get in a cab to go to chicago with you to join another team oh man so as a young padres fan i i remember being very sad about this trade because i love dave from the 1984 team i had become a big kevin mitchell fan as well and uh, as it turned out, you know, they got Chris Brown. I was never as big of a fan of Chris Brown when he came. But it wasn't the worst trade on earth because the Padres did get a Cy Young Award winner. Mark Davis ended up winning the Cy Young. And yes. a guy who stuck around for a while that came in that trade, Mark Mud Grant, yep. came to yeah. the Padres via that trade Absolutely. as well. And uh, yeah. we can't get rid of him now. He's yeah, just, yeah, he's here. Yeah. And, and, hey, now let's not, let's not eliminate the fourth guy in that trade, Keith Comstock, Keith Comstock another lefty. So lefties have to stay together. That's exactly right. Even though right. mine's gone, I'm still a lefty. <laughs> this is Once him. a lefty, always a lefty. And this is him. It's more of a state of mind. It's yes, a state of it's mind. a state of mind. <laughs> yes, guy. it is. This guy. It is. Although, i got to tell you, after being around these guys at the camp, my state of mind is actually like comatose compared to these guys. <laughs> Holy un smoke. It's unbelievable. He tells us that it's the first game, and he goes, we're sitting there, and he goes, Man, I wish I had two arms, and I just <laughs> fell over. I'm like, oh my god! So the 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 story, and I know you shared uh, some of it yesterday. And we've kind of we've told our audience a little bit of the back. Well, we tried to share it on uh, Wednesday night, <laughs> yeah. at the, and then we got interrupted, unfortunately. But he did finish the story yesterday for the campers. And and yeah. <laughs> the thing that touched me the most about it was um, when the doctors came to you, Dave, and they said your your arm and your shoulder they have to go. Yeah. Your state of mind at that point. Yeah. Um, it was really interesting because I knew what I was up against. I mean, reality hits, you know, the doctors look at you and they tell you have cancer. And in that moment, what I didn't get a chance to share with the guys was that um, all of a sudden I kind of had a out of body experience. And now all of a sudden I'm thinking about not baseball, but I'm thinking about my wife. I'm thinking about my kids. And the first thing that came to my mind in that out of outer out of body experience was oh my gosh if i die from this disease who's going to marry my wife right and then the next question was you know is that guy going to end up raising my children and i thought oh my gosh this is this is not good and then i thought well will he love them as much as my 
my I do. Yeah. My kids and wife as much as I do. But guys, here's the thought that came to my mind in that moment. Will he love them more? Because I know who I am. Because I shared that part of the story with you guys at the camp. That's the one that touched me the most. You know, is, is when you you told me. Um, well, tell tell him uh, yeah, how I mean, how it had been. Yeah, it was it was hard. The, the depression. It was like being on a roller coaster. You know, and towards the end of the journey before the amputation, I started getting really angry. And then after the amputation, it got worse, and I became verbally abusive. And I'm really grateful for the grace that my wife had for me through that. She kept looking at me, and she goes, "You know what? I don't like you right now." Yeah. But she said, I know your heart, and this is not you. And so she stuck with me through oh, all of that, amazing. which I'm so grateful for. But here's, here's, what, here's what happened in that moment. I had two choices. I could either walk away from the game and focus on the health, or I could focus on the health, and if they give me the go-ahead, try and come back. Well, I had no choice. I had to try and come back. Sure. How was that even possible? You said that you had no choice. They removed, you said, how, what percent of your, your 50, muscle? 50% of the deltoid muscle. And the doctors told me I lost 95% use of that muscle. So knowing how finely tuned you have to be to be a professional athlete, especially a pitcher, how was that even possible yeah. that you came back? Larry Brown and Dick Dent. Dick Dent was the trainer. Larry Brown was the physical therapist at the Palo Alto Sports Clinic. And he is one of the top two guys that was invited to Australia, which is one of the leading countries in the world with physical therapy. And so I had those two guys take care of me. They figured out how to get all the other stuff in my shoulder to fire when there was no longer a deltoid muscle. So I got to tell you, man, that's why what I said yesterday to the guys, we really do need each other. Yeah, This was an effort by so many people to help me get back to the mound. And I'm so grateful for that. Talking to Dave Dravecki here on Ben and Woods this morning, mental health is something that we've talked about a lot uh, on our show. I suffer from depression. I go to a therapist. When you talked about bringing people in, uh, tell that again, just how much we need people yeah. um, and, and how easy it is to shut yourself in a room and not talk to anybody. Yeah. Isolation is the worst thing you can do um, because when you find yourself in darkness you need some people to help bring you to the light. And in the in my process, it was recognizing now I can look back and I can say with all my heart emphatically that it actually works. <clears throat> you become vulnerable and you expose yourself to people you trust on the, on the journey, especially when you're in those dark moments. And that's where you begin to understand where the help comes from. And, and from my perspective, God brought a boatload of people into my story to walk with me, to give me the strength to endure. It was those moments when I was, you know, visiting Memphis, Tennessee at a speaking appearance. I had no business being there because I was depressed. And Atlee Hamaker shows up for three days and sits with me, doesn't say a word, just shows up. It's that kind of stuff. And so I told the campers, that's what you are to each other. You're a community and you need each other. You know, it's interesting when you say you had so many people on your journey and, and we were watching when you came back and, and your arm broke in the big leagues. How different do you think it might have been if, if your arm had broken warming up for one of your minor league starts before you got up? No one had seen it. You know, we probably, maybe would have read about it in the paper. A little bit different of a journey, maybe. Oh, so different. That's why I look back on this and and. I don't want to freak people out when I say this, but I believe the providence of God was at play. I believe that in my story, because of my faith journey with him and the people that he brought into that story, as I said to the campers, there's something bigger going on than baseball. Guys, um, I didn't get a chance to talk about what that really was, but when we got to the other side, I realized what it was. And that was, in this conversation, in the context of this conversation, it was about realizing it was no longer about what I was going to get out of life, but what I was going to give. Bam. And so my wife and I started a nonprofit called Endurance. And for your audience, anybody who's out there listening, if you're battling with cancer, if you're struggling with depression, go to endurance.org. We will send our story to you as an encouragement on your journey. Get connected with people that love you and care for you and let them into your story. If you need help, get to a psychologist, get to a psychiatrist. 
They're there to help. And this is something that we don't need to hide anymore. You know, we're strong. We live in a world where we are, we are, we are driven to the point where we do things we shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And the reason why we do is because we feel the pressure from the outside. It's okay to say no. One of the most important words I've learned through this process is don't be afraid to say no, because for every no that you say no to, there's a yes to somebody else. And it's usually somebody else that you're saying yes to. And that person is the most important person in that moment. And so reaching out and getting the help you need, understanding the value of community, the support that we get when we're vulnerable. When you're vulnerable, you invite people in and you can begin to journey and they can walk with you to encourage you on the journey. They're not there to fix you. Anybody that tries to fix you, tell them to take a hike. Yeah. They're there to walk with you. That's so powerful. So, so powerful. Dave Gervecki uh, joins us here on Ben and Woods this morning. Very, very inspirational, very moving. Uh, and hits home. It's home for a lot of people in our audience, uh, Dave. Let's let's switch gears a little bit. Yeah. How, how much do you watch baseball these days how involved are you in the game uh, as it as it stands today yeah i i love watching baseball i've got my uh, subscription to the mlb network and i really enjoy watching the game um i work for the giants as an ambassador yep and so i need to stay connected to the game when i'm around the fans to be able to understand what the conversation's going to be like and so uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm engaged uh at a very healthy point <laughs> Yeah. to be able to actually enjoy not only the game itself, but to enjoy the fans. I never, Woodsy, I never walked away from the game bitter or angry that something was taken away from me. I never thought I'd have the opportunity to play as a young kid from Youngstown, Ohio. How's he going to get to the big leagues? So the first day I put that uniform on, my dream came true. Every day after that was icing on the cake. So it was a privilege and an honor to wear the Padre uniform, and to wear the Giants uniform because I had so much respect for this game. I'm curious. Um, obviously, you know, it's been 40 years now since 1984 and 35 years <laughs> since the end of your career. Probably a lot more people who don't know who Dave Dravecki is than do. When someone comes up to you, do they do they generally like ask what happened? Do they is it awkward? Well, how does that how does that work? Well, let me put it this way. <laughs> if they don't ask, I tell them. Okay. <laughs> But when they do ask, I'm really grateful because then I get to tell them. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it. I have no problem talking about my journey. I have no problem talking about being vulnerable and talking about the hard things because I learned so much through it that has transformed my life that I wouldn't want it any other way. And just by the way, people know there are uh, other fantasy campers here uh, participating in the camp who yep. uh, have uh, artificial limbs yep. yeah. or missing uh, a p arm, part of an arm, yep. and they're yeah. out here having a great time playing baseball like everybody else. Yeah. The guy Josh, uh, the Paralympian, yeah. who's a gold medal winner, yeah. he's one of the tougher. I don't think I've ever gotten him out uh, when I'm on the mound, and he yeah. uh, he he's hits a dude, man. He hits with one arm, yeah, and he's uh, amazing. He, it's it's incredible to see, uh, and it puts you know people that complain a lot like myself. <laughs> it puts us in perspective. We <laughs> have to get up very early you in the early, morning. You don't uh, really have to get up, Dave. Day. <laughs> I can only so imagine. feel sorry for us because we have to get up very early in the morning. Yeah. It's been so fun uh, getting to know you here. You know, I was traded from your squad. Uh, you know, got our revenge yesterday. Was, I know it, you did. It was yep, fun. You sure it, did. It, it was fun. You're but, probably uh, chuckling under your breath every step yeah, of the you way. Say, you don't think TK likes you, but you didn't have. Oh, Dave, 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 right. Dave and I bonded. Yeah. Dave, Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave came up. He came up to me after I was traded, and he he, he came down to my ear, and he goes. I loved your intensity. I loved your intensity. And I said, thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, it has been such a pleasure uh, to get to know you. Uh, honored to, yeah. to, to know you. I was so excited when I heard you were coming uh, because, again, that is a moment, you know, the moment that we all saw, the moment that has changed your life entirely yeah. and has allowed you to help so many people. I'll never forget it. I mean, I was 14 years old when it happened, yeah. and I remember seeing it and going, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You know, and, and to be able to see you all these years later and to see the smile on your face and to see how kind you are to all the campers, it's just been amazing. You're a, you're yeah. an incredible man. 
Thank you. An Wilson. incredible man. I appreciate you saying that. Now you and Paul are going out uh, for your yeah. game right now. Right this now. is yes. the fifth place championship game. Go out, win that one, and then you can tell everybody we got fifth place. Fifth is better than sixth. I, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much I mean, ice Paul he's got on him. I don't know how many <laughs> suction cups he had on him. He's been throwing I know, good. I don't know how many rolling experiences sort of he's had. To to but he needs to up. get ready to go today look, because we need the gamer to kick it in gear. He's got a bomb wrapped. Look, it's yeah. a bomb. That's an actual <laughs> bomb wrapped around. That's how bad he wants to win oh, today. I love it, man. We're going for it. We got to kick it in gear. We got to pick it up a notch. That is amazing. Uh, yeah. Just a little message here in the uh, chat from Doreen. Doreen says, you're my favorite player of all time. I had the chance to meet you many years ago in San Diego during a real estate transaction with Ted Leitner, and we took a picture. Amazing. Oh, so awesome. the, uh, the, the, the reviews are in on the chat. Everyone said this was their favorite interview of the week, Dave. Oh, uh, the great well, Dave Jervec. Did you buy I Ted love, Leitner's I house or sell him a house no, or something? No, I did not <laughs> buy Ted Leitner's house. But I've had, I've had several walks with Ted Leitner and talks with Ted Leitner. I really like him. He's oh, we all love dude. Uncle Teddy. You know, I want to say one thing. The Padres fans were so gracious to us. I know we were up in San Francisco at the time when it happened, but many of the Padres fans connected with us and said that they were praying for us, and we're just so grateful for that. We love the community. We love the fans of that community, and, and we're just really grateful for the relationships we have. I know there's a division rivalry, but I feel like guys like you and, and Flan and Boach, they really have two families yeah, now yeah. With, oh, the, absolutely. with the Giants and the Padres. Yeah, no question. Yep, definitely well, two families. And we all hate the Dodgers, so that's it. Yeah. We're all yeah. kind of yeah. together. We're yeah. all together that's exactly on that one. right. We're all, all together. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah. the, the great, great, great Dave Trebecki. Thank you so much. Go get your squad ready. You got it, And man. Uh, it was Thanks, such guys. a pleasure. Thank you.